When you hear God, you dare the impossible. When you hear God, you do things that other people would not do. Hearing God is a key that's often overlooked in answered prayer. You must know what God is saying to you. And once you know, then you can pray the right way. Then you can believe the right way. Then you can act the right way. Why? Because you have heard from God. It makes all the difference in the world. You remember Peter in the boat? Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you on the water. See, I just need to know it's you speaking to me. And if I know it, then I will step out of this boat where everybody else is safe. And I will do the impossible. The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. When life seems difficult, it's easy to think that you need more time or money. But what you really need is God to answer your prayers. God's desire is to answer your prayers. He longs to meet your needs and see your relationships become healthy and happy. Though many people pray to God, not everyone experiences the same results or even expects to have their prayers answered. But God wants to answer your prayers. If you can learn how to get your prayers answered, your whole life will be changed. Today, as a thank you for your gift of $35 or more, Jerry Dearman will send you his seven video DVD series and companion guide titled Seven Steps to Answered Prayer. The Seven Steps to Answered Prayer series will revolutionize your life as Jerry Dearman shows you how to tap into God's plans for you. And for your gift of $60 or more, we'll also include this CD series titled Keys to Answered Prayer, which shows you how to walk with God and have your prayers answered. Call today. By joining with Jerry Dearman Ministries to bring these life-changing messages around the world, you will also receive these resources. Call us toll-free at 1-800-544-8000 or visit jerrydearman.com today. Let's read John chapter 15, verse 7. We've really looked at this whole beginning of the chapter from Jesus, but we're zeroing in now on keys to answered prayer. So we're zeroing in on verse 7. So let's all read that from the New King James Version. If you don't have that, follow along on the screens if you would. Everybody nice and loudly, the words of Jesus, let's read. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That sounds too good to be true. But not only did Jesus say it, and not only is it in the Bible, but Jesus also told us, listen, I don't say anything to you unless I hear my Father say it. So we know that Father God and the Lord Jesus desire that we get our desires answered in prayer. Let me read it to you again. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now that's a key. That's a key. And we're going to talk about some of that today. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. I don't know about you, but that just turns me on. Man, I can get my desires to come to pass with the Lord's help. Beyond human ability, beyond my experience, beyond my education, beyond my strength, beyond my time. All of my ability is no longer a limitation because now I'm in the unlimited realm of God. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Some of you are saying, are you just preaching or is this true? Both. I'm preaching the truth straight from the lips of Jesus himself. Amen. See, if I, had a, if I was the one that said this, well, this is not going to do us any good. But Jesus said this. Oh, and that's why, see, when Jesus came and he preached miracle after miracle after miracle happened because he was preaching this stuff that other people didn't preach. He was declaring something of a truth 
from God himself that other people were not declaring, didn't have the boldness to declare, even though it was in the word, even though it was already in the Old Testament. They didn't have the confidence to say it like that. They didn't have the confidence to preach it like that. Jesus came with full confidence. We have to say the truth. We have to say what God's heart is. We have to say what God's will is. We have to declare what God will do. And when you preach it like that, it makes all the difference in the world. So Jesus is sharing with us, you need to understand, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. We know that is true, because Jesus said it, and it's in the inspired word of God. Now, are you ready for key number two? Key number two is hearing from God. Hearing from God. If you want your prayers to be answered, you need to hear from God. It's as simple as that. If you want your prayers to be answered, you need to hear from God. And I'm going to show you why. Because you see, if you want to access more grace, then you need more faith. If you want to access different grace, you need different faith. I may believe for salvation, because I've been preached salvation. And in some churches, they preach salvation, 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 salvation. And there are many people being saved. Because much faith for salvation is coming. Praise the Lord. We need that. That's the most important thing that needs to be preached, is salvation through Jesus. But you know, there are other things. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Well, to not forget them, we need to preach about them. We need to hear about them. And when you hear about other types of grace that's been extended to you, then you have faith for that other type. For example, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing. So if key number one is faith, then we need to know how to get faith. Key number two is hearing from God. But notice it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But let me help you understand something. I don't want you to hear this scripture as saying faith comes just by hearing somebody read the Bible. Faith comes by hearing somebody just read a scripture and then talk, have a little talk. No. No, that's not how faith comes. Faith comes when you hear the Word of God, the Bible, but when you hear it, you believe you're hearing from God. Because if you're just hearing a holy book, if you're just hearing somebody's opinion, it's not going to bring faith because you don't know that God's actually talking to you. Amen. Have you ever heard anybody say, this is my Bible, it is God speaking to me, why do we say that? Because if you don't know he's speaking to you, it doesn't bring faith. And if it doesn't bring faith, you don't believe and your prayers won't be answered. See, you must understand we're not just talking about hearing somebody blab the Bible and say, oh, that's good. Well, that's a scripture. We, we, we probably should be excited about that. But you don't really believe God's talking to you. But when you hear the word of God, and in your heart, you actually hear God saying it to you, it brings faith. It brings faith. See, so we need to talk in just a few minutes about how you hear, too. It's not only what you hear, but it's how you hear. But let's focus for a moment on hearing from God. Hearing from God. If you know that you're hearing from God, you don't doubt it. If you're just hearing scriptures from the Bible, you may still doubt but when you're convinced this is God speaking to me, it brings faith. It brings faith. It drives doubt away. Why? Because the almighty creator God is telling me this. So it has credibility. It brings confidence that I can step out in faith. I can believe. I can expect these things to happen. So you can't just hear blah, blah, blah scriptures. You need to know that God's saying it to you. And once you understand that God is saying it to you, it makes all the difference in the world. God said to Abraham, Abraham, I want you to, to get up. I want you to circumcise all the males in your house. 
Now think about that practically. I want you, Abraham, to circumcise all the males. By the way, there were hundreds of them. And you know what the Bible says? Abraham rose up early in the morning and got a sharp stone. I know some of us are saying, a stone? <laughs> no hospital? No modern tools? Got a sharp stone. And he circumcised hundreds of men and himself in one day. What am I telling you? When you know you're hearing from God, you do things that other people would not do. Did you hear me? You venture out into territory where other people say, you're crazy, you are weird, and some may even say you're a sicko. <laughs> but it was absolutely the Lord, wasn't it? Yes. Wasn't it? And he stepped out to do things. Well, this wasn't new for Abraham. This wasn't new. The Lord said to him, you know, leave your family, leave your country from your father's house to a land that I'll show you. And he did. And he did. He's a father of faith. He continued to hear the voice of God and not doubt it. Think of Moses. God told Moses, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, will be your prophet. I have made you as a God to Pharaoh. I have made you as God to Pharaoh. Exodus 7, 1. I have made you as God to Pharaoh. So now Moses knows his new status. I have made you as God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, will be your prophet. So now Moses is not approaching Pharaoh as a man. He's approaching Pharaoh as a God. And the Lord would say, now go out to Pharaoh when he comes out to the river in the morning and say this to him. No protocols, no appointment. Just walk up to the king. See, you don't do that unless something has been altered in your mind. It's illogical. It's unreasonable. You could put your life in danger to just try to approach the king like that. But there's no fear because he's heard from the Almighty, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. I've changed your status. You're no longer on a human status. You are to him as God. And what you say goes. Walk up to him and tell him this. And Moses did. See, you don't dare that. When you hear God, you dare the impossible. When you hear God, you do things that other people would not do. Our vision to build solid lives around the world is coming to pass with the hard work of rock missionaries. In July of 2005, pastors Frank and Elena Razo moved to Guaymas, Mexico to start a prison ministry in the Guaymas Penitentiary. Since then, more than 700 inmates have dedicated their lives to Christ, and more than 450 have been water baptized. Anthony and Yadira Lozano were completely transformed as they went through OSL at The Rock. They were moved by the call to go partner with the Razos in Guaymas to finish the new building and to establish the church outside the walls of the prison. In 2010, pastors Yasir and Monique Kandel received their call as missionaries to the Native American tribes in North America. They are now dedicating themselves to building solid lives through OSL and educating and empowering Native Americans to become strong leaders in their own communities. In 2010, Pastors John and Debbie Booker were sent to oversee the Foursquare Earthquake Response Teams in Haiti and for three years coordinated the huge task of relief and rebuilding. They then returned to serve as staff pastors at The Rock, but God is now directing them back to Haiti with a renewed vision. Through OSL, training pastors, working with schools and orphanages, and a new next-gen movement, the Booker's hope is to help Haitians find their way out of poverty into self-sufficiency and God's blessings. Hearing God is a key that's often overlooked in answered prayer. You must know what God is saying to you. And once you know, then you can pray the right way, then you can believe the right way, then you can act the right way. Why? Because you have heard from God. It makes all the difference in the world. You remember Peter in the boat? Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you on the water. See, I just need to know what you speaking to me. And if I know it, then I will step out of this boat where everybody else is safe. And I will do 
the impossible. Just tell me to come. Jesus said, come. And based on one word, he believed it was Jesus speaking to him. You remember, they thought it was a ghost out there. You remember that? They thought it was a ghost. But once he heard, come, he threw his legs over the side of that boat and dropped off. And that water caught him. And Peter walked on the water. See, we always talk about Jesus walking on the water. What about Peter walking on the water? He did it. How? He heard from God. He heard from God. He prayed, I want to walk on the water. Tell me to come. Jesus said, come. And based on hearing, it gave him confidence to see his prayer answered. But see, you have to be willing to listen to the word of God. See, Peter was drawing on Jesus. I need to hear from you, Jesus. I need to make sure that I'm clear on what you're saying. And once I am, I can do what other people can't do. They're stuck in the boat. I'm out with you. Amen. Some of you are being taken by the Lord into walking on water status. Amen. You're about to leave the ordinary. You're about to leave where the level where you grew up in your family. And the Lord is taking you to walking on water status. Because you hear from God. Because you hear from God. I remember when the Lord spoke to me to start a church. He spoke to me in January of 1999. I had a national leadership ministry position. I was content. I had vision. I had excitement about the future. Traveling around, speaking, all covered. Didn't have to pay anything. Travel around, minister here, minister there. Just what... You know, some people would talk about a dream job. Just minister the Word of God, you know, have the opportunity and the privilege to teach, train. But when God spoke to me, now I could resign that position. Now I could move at my own expense. No supporters. I didn't send out one support letter. Didn't ask one person. Hey, will you, you know, God spoken to me. Would you please uh, begin to give me so much a month? I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying I didn't need it. I heard from God. He will supply. He'll do it. Let my leaders know, hey, I need to start a church. The Lord said, I'm going to leave this. And uh, my leader said, well, just stay in this position and start the church. And then later you can transition. Oh, praise the Lord. And we'll give you time to do it. See, that's favor from God. I didn't ask for it. Favor from God. Provision from the Lord. Amen. I said amen. amen. See, you can leave security when you've heard from God. Because the voice of the Lord is strong. The voice of the Lord is secure. It's safe. It's safe. I don't need human security. Once I hear from God, that settles it. Now we know we're going to be okay. Now we know we're going to be sustained on the water. Amen. Amen. And ever since then, we just continue to step out. You know, we just started in that one little building. But now we've got multiple buildings on multiple campuses and multiple congregations in multiple languages. All by faith in God's Word. All by faith. See, there is no limit when you get into the realm of God. There is no limit, but you must hear God. You can't be presumptuous and just have a good idea and think, oh, I can do this. This will make me happy. This will make me popular. No, that won't work. You must know that you're hearing from God. But once you hear from God, doubt is drained away. I cannot emphasize this key enough to answer prayer. Hearing from God. Hearing directly from God through His precious Word. Through his precious word. It must be in line with the word. The word judges anything else you hear from God. Now, saving grace requires saving faith. I told you to turn to Romans chapter 10. Notice, Paul says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So notice you're believing in Jesus dying on the cross, being raised from the dead, 
and by believing you're saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice the faith. Look at verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now notice verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Talking about the importance of hearing the word of God preached. Talking about the importance of hearing the word of God preached. In just a moment, I want to talk about how not all preaching is hearing the word of God. Amen. I could start with a scripture. But what I say after that may give you less faith in what the scripture said than more. Amen. Not all preaching is the same. Let me come back to that. Now, saving faith, excuse me, receiving saving grace requires saving faith. In other words, faith for salvation. How do you get that? By hearing the word of God regarding salvation. And then you believe God for salvation. And then you receive the grace of God. By grace are you saved through faith. So the salvation happens completely by grace, but you access it by faith. How do you get that faith? You heard preaching from the Word of God on salvation. And then you have saving faith, and then you access saving grace. So you're saved by grace, but your faith is what accesses that. And you got that saving faith by hearing saving teaching from the Word of God. Now, Healing grace we, requires healing faith. Healing grace requires healing faith. You can't get healed just on saving faith. You need to believe for healing. Some people think, well, I just believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven one day. Doesn't everything else just come? It all came by grace. It's out here in the heavenly realms, but you have in the heavenly realm, but you need to access it by faith. Amen. So you've accessed salvation. Praise the Lord. But don't forget all of his benefits. So healing grace needs to be accessed by healing faith. Notice in Matthew 23 verse, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching. What is he doing? Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Notice he wasn't healing, teaching, and preaching. He was teaching, preaching, and healing. Because to get people healed, you need to teach and preach. Amen? And we know he wasn't just teaching and preaching salvation. He said, the Spirit of the Lord's on me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach recovery of sight to the blind. Isn't that right? Set at liberty those who are oppressed. He was preaching the benefits from God. And because he preached it, people believed it, and they were able to get healed. So notice he was not healing, teaching, and preaching. He was teaching, preaching, and then healing. Notice again, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and then, third, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Now notice verse 24. Then his fame, what fame? Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people. Why did they bring to him all sick people? What did people hear? People are getting healed. Jesus is healing people. Jesus can heal you. That's what they were hearing. His fame went all out, and they brought to him all sick people. Why? Because they were hearing the word spread, Jesus can heal the sick. Jesus can heal the incurable diseases. Jesus can heal. And they're hearing it. So what do they do? They bring all the sick people. But I want you to notice they had to hear that before they brought him. Are you listening? Then his fame went all throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon-possessed and epileptics and paralytics. And he healed them. But before he healed them, they had to hear that he could. Amen. They had to hear that he is healing people. And then they believed, and then they came and their prayers were answered. How many of you can see this? 
See, they were hearing accurately that God is our healer. They were hearing accurately that Jesus is our healer. And then now their prayers can be answered. These people, many of them have been sick for many years. And they weren't waiting on God to be willing. They weren't waiting on God's timing. They were waiting to hear. And once they heard, they came and they received. Amen. There's no indication that Jesus said, oh, wait, no, no, yours is not until uh, September the 4th, your healing's coming. No, no, yours is not. No, everybody who believed and came were healed. Amen. Amen. Now, that was an excerpt from the series, Keys to Answer Prayer, and God really, really does desire to answer our prayers. But did you know that everything you hear affects what you believe? And not being able to hear from God adversely affects your faith. So it's very important to be hearing from God and to be guarding against the other voices that question God's faithfulness. And you know, the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you're already doing exactly what you need to do to build your faith. And I hope as you watch these broadcasts that you're becoming increasingly convinced that God is faithful and that he'll do exactly what he promised to do. Now stay tuned for some important messages and remember that God is always faithful. We'll see you next time. When life seems difficult, it's easy to think that you need more time or money, but what you really need is God to answer your prayers. God's desire is to answer your prayers. He longs to meet your needs and see your relationships become healthy and happy. Though many people pray to God, not everyone experiences the same results or even expects to have their prayers answered. But God wants to answer your prayers. If you can learn how to get your prayers answered, your whole life will be changed. Today, as a thank you for your gift of $35 or more, Jerry Dearman will send you his seven video DVD series and companion guide titled Seven Steps to Answered Prayer. The Seven Steps to Answered Prayer series will revolutionize your life as Jerry Dearman shows you how to tap into God's plans for you. And for your gift of $60 or more, we'll also include this CD series titled Keys to Answered Prayer, which shows you how to walk with God and have your prayers answered. Call today. By joining with Jerry Dearman Ministries to bring these life-changing messages around the world, you will also receive these resources. Call us toll-free at 1-800-544-8000 or visit jerrydearman.com today. Solid Life with Jerry Dearman is made possible by the generous gifts of those who have joined hands with us to take the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Jerry Dearman Ministries is building solid lives around the globe through the life-transforming power of the Word of God by discipling people in every nation. For more information about Jerry Dearman Ministries or one of The Rock's many campuses around the country, please go to jerrydearman.com. Write to us at P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California 92803 or call us at 1-800-544-8000.